Hi, my name is Chris. I'm going to show you how to set up your map tools environment to import and export macros from Notepad++, as well as a few other tools that I use uh, to help me with uh, writing macros. First, we're going to want to go to the rptools.net website and then visit our forums. There I have a uh, post under map tool and macros. And it's called macro writing starter kit. Once there, you're going to want to download the three files that I have here. We have the notepad config files, RP edit, and then a starter lib token. Okay, then you're going to want to, if you don't already have it, go to notepad and then download it. And once complete, you'll save a shortcut to your desktop and then you can save the, darn it, there we go. Then you can save it to your taskbar. So I currently have it pinned. All right, once we have that done, we, we wanna close the uh, program if you already have it open. And under the zip file for the config files, you wanna open up the readme file. There it tells you how to install the files and where to install them. So we'll start with the uh, map tool XML and it's going to be under your program files under the notepad plugins APIs. So let's go there. So C drive program files, notepad plugins APIs. And then we do is we just copy this and then paste it into this area here. Once that's done, we want to copy these four files into the user account app data roaming notepad plus plus. So let's go there. So it's going to be under my name here and under app data. If this, is, if this doesn't show, then you wanna to go to your view, options, change folder and search options, go to the view tab and right here you'll see show hidden files and folders. Check that, apply and say okay. Okay, and then we go to app data, roaming, notepad plus plus. And then we go back to our other folder And then we copy those four files. Okay. Then we'll need to close all these down. And let's open up Notepad. Here you're going to have your languages. You'll see that map tool is now there. There's a few settings as well you might want to change. So I'll use my own preferences. Uh, let's see, that's all good. Make sure under formatting that the end of line is correct. I use Windows, so it's control line feed. And default directory, you may wanna change that to something, you'll store all your macro code. Under language, you'll see tab size. I have set the three, which is, I think the best one to do. And I don't like tabs because it just doesn't port as well. So you replace by space right there. The other area you wanna check on is the auto completion, which is the whole reason why you're doing this in the first place uh, for the uh, tools and the, the helping of writing the macros. You can turn these two on so now when I uh, type something out, 
let's say J7, it'll give you a preview of what you can type in for like um, reserved words or functions that are in MapTool. So for JSON contains, I just hit enter. Then I hit the uh, parentheses for the function and I'll show the tooltip on what it takes for those. Now this can be kind of annoying for some people if done all the time. So you can turn those off. And then use the shortcut keys for them. So we want to type in our JSON whatever so in order to get to the, uh, see what function names are out there, you can hit the, I think it's shift space. No, control space. There we go. And I'll show you a list of all the, the functions that I've inputted into the config file. So there's our JSON contains. And then we'll put our parentheses. And if you want it to pop up the tip for it, you hit the shift control space bar. And then you can take a look at what's a, what it wants. Okay, let's open up Map Tool. I'm not sure if everybody has this set correctly, so I'll go ahead and go over that real quick. Uh, if you go to Map Tool Launcher, it's best to have 2048. Leave this as default and then put a uh, four for your stack size here. Other than that, that's pretty much the only time you have to look at this screen. All right, since that's loading, I'll go ahead and take a look over here. I'm gonna grab a uh, macro that I wrote a long time ago. It's called uh, Roll Dice E, and what it does is uh, use exploding dice but it only explodes once. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna put that into my uh, map tool over here so I can edit it for later. Okay, um, with the other two files that were downloaded, let's go to our downloads. The starter lib token and RP edit, we're gonna wanna move those two into map tool. And whenever you drop a new lib token, the first thing you want to do is run the on-campaign load. That's pretty much the only time you really need to do it. There are other instances where you need to but when editing, but for now, that's all you need to do. Uh, what we're going to do is on the RP edit token, we're going to take the edit token and then move it over to the campaign window. Now we can use that button on other tokens. Okay, so we're now editing our default lib token. I'm gonna load everything that's already currently on there. And then we're gonna select all, copy, go to notepad. And then below this, we'll just go ahead and paste it. As you can see, there's these little code folding lines allows me to collapse this if I'm not using it, for example. And also, if you're looking at existing code and you want to know what it does, you can actually just put the cursor right after the parentheses and then hit that control shift space bar and it'll kind of let you know what's going on with that function. But these are all the uh, functions that have come preloaded with this lib token. Uh, what the on campaign load does is it converts all the functions that you add, let's say the roll dice E function, into uh, a user defined function. That allows me to call it without using the macro. If you're not familiar with that, I'll write that out real quick. Um, if I wanted to call a macro, I would say, oh, we don't want that actually. Go macro, then whatever roll dice e at, and then we want to know what lib token it's on. Uh, one cheater method is to say plus, we're doing what you call a string concatenation. 
and we're going to say git macro location. And that's the cheater method. And then it's going to want some kind of uh, numbers passed to it. In this case, if I were to call that function with this macro call, it wants two parameters in a, a JSON array, basically. So I would go JSON append. It's going to be a start with an empty one. Then we're going to put in our num dice and our sides. And that's how I'd normally call it. In order to get the data from it, I would then have to create a uh, variable for it. We'll go call it result, and then it's going to be macro return. That's how you normally do it. With the uh, UDF approach, I would do it like this. I would say result equals roll dice e, and then I would say num dice and sides. And you're done. You have your result. So a little easier. Also allows you to insert it into, I guess, areas like a middle of code. If I wanted to put a string here, roll equals. I can just do it that way if I really wanted to and just simply output it. But it's a little bit of the way, lazy way of doing it. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And we want to make this into the same format we have here. So we want to put the, uh, the wrapper around it. We're going to call it roll dice E. And then we need the ending wrapper, which is the two exclamation points. And then the props is just optional. If I really wanted to set up things, I could just either copy an existing one. And paste, there we go. And I can change various things if I wanted to. But let's not do that. Let's create a raw one. All right, now we want to get this back into map tool. So there's a shortcut. You can hit the shift control C and that'll copy just the current block where, where the mouse was. So just roll dice here. So we're going to clear this space here. I'll hit that and then save and that creates it over here. Also uh, under on campaign load. Now, if I wanted to call roll dice E currently the way it's set up, it requires a prefix. So my result would equal xxlib dot roll dice E and then, you know, 1d20. Actually, we'll go 1d6. And that's how you would call it. But um, this is only recommended if you have like uh, several lib tokens. If you're just using the one, then you may want just simply just get rid of that all together. Just make it a, a blank space. So now I don't have to put on a prefix. Also, when you're using other people's lib tokens, you may want to identify it with your initials or something. So you can just do that as well. So am dot. That would be a simple method of doing it. But for now, let's just leave it blank. Okay, now that I've updated this one, I also want to copy this over there and save it. And now that's been updated. You can take a look over here. It's now updated. All right, so uh, you may be tempted just to type in the function here. So roll dice E. 1d6. And then you're going to get the UDF defined function, or not defined basically. 
uh, what happened is I added it to the code, but on campaign load never ran. So if I run it, it is now defined. So I should be able to simply refer to it. And there we go. Now this is a uh, special function. This one creates a hidden value. In order to create a hidden value that can be referenced by the calling function, you have to give it a certain domain. I'll show you what I mean. Under on campaign load, there's a little note here. It allows you to ignore output, yes or no, or give it a new scope, yes or no. Most of the time, yes, you want a new scope, so everything is self-contained within that one little section. But if you want to share all the variables from here to the uh, calling function, you want to set your new scope to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to define new function manually because all the default ones ignore output and then this new scope is one as well. So we'll copy this and then we'll create a new one. And then we want the roll dice E function in here. So there we go. And currently it's ignore output. Yeah, we still want to ignore the output from there. Otherwise it's going to give you blank spaces when you put comments in there. And then we want to not have a new scope. So no new scope. And let's go ahead and copy this with a shift control C and upload it here and save. And instead of using 1d6, we'll do 10d6. So it'll have a bunch of d6s and the exploding values listed together. So 34. So we have our dice and you see the ring in there, we have an eight and a seven, which are the exploded dice. All right, that should uh, cover the basics here. I'm actually gonna do another video um, where we're dealing with open legend dice, which are fairly complex to do, which is kind of why you need to roll your own, create your own dice roller. So we'll go ahead and go over that um, next video. So uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you then.